Hello everybody, welcome back to another video by Dissociated. This video is going to be about PTSD and the trauma response. Now if you know anything about DID, you will know that DID is essentially a very severe form of PTSD. So regardless of whether you have PTSD, DID, or are supporting somebody with PTSD, CPTSD, DID, OSDD, this will be useful to you. This is a debunking DID video, so it's going to be quite scientific. Hopefully, it will be presented in a way you can understand, but if you would like to do your own research, you'll be able to find all the links to the resources we're using in the description box below. Hope you enjoy the video, guys. See you in a bit. Okay, so the trauma response. The trauma response can happen in both children and adult, a response to any trauma. But first of all, what is trauma? Trauma is a deeply distressing or upsetting event that overwhelms the body's natural defense mechanisms. This can cause feelings of helplessness, a diminished sense of self, and inability to understand or experience different feelings and emotions, and otherwise the range of human experience can be limited. I'm going to give you a list of examples of trauma that can cause a trauma response. So if you feel you may be triggered by this, perhaps if you have DID, CPTSD, PTSD, or OSDD, please feel free to skip ahead to the time listed here. So causes of trauma. This list is by no means completely exhaustive or comprehensive, but these are some of the most common examples that you'll come across when experiencing or talking about trauma. This could be catastrophic injuries or illnesses, invasive medical procedures, childhood abuse, physical, sexual, psychological, emotional, even spiritual, war, childhood neglect or abandonment, natural disasters like earthquakes or tsunamis, birth-related stress, and this can include both the individual who is giving birth or the infant too, and accidents. This can be car crashes, high falls, accidents at work. Any and all of these things can be considered a trauma. So now we know what trauma is and the definition of it and some examples of what may be considered traumatic. What is the traumatic response? What makes trauma a trauma? The body's natural survival mechanism for self-preservation is in the midbrain. The midbrain is also known as the emotional brain. If you were to consider my hand an image of the brain, this would be the brain stem here. The midbrain is somewhere in the middle at the very top is the logical brain, and at the bottom here, along with the brainstem, is the hindbrain. The midbrain, in the middle here, the emotional brain, controls the nervous system response. Some of you may know this as fight or flight. The full name for it is fight, flight, fawn, freeze. For this video, we're going to call it the fight or flight response for short. In humans, physical and psychological and emotional damage are all processed in the same area of the brain. This means that during a traumatic response, a psychological injury can be processed and felt in exactly the same way as a physical injury. The body feels the symptoms of trauma as though there were an enemy or a predator due to our basic evolutionary programming. This causes an inflammatory response from the immune system which floods the body and the brain with cortisol. Over long periods of time, if this fight or flight response is kept up, so for example, in terms of CPTSD and PTSD, this excess cortisol can cause damage to the brain and the body. It can activate C-reactive proteins, which are biomarkers in the body, that pinpoint hereditary genetic issues such as asthma and inflammatory diseases. Any previous physical injuries may also start acting up again. This is how and why trauma can cause physical issues, especially if the trauma is sustained over a long period of time. The fight or flight response is only supposed to be an immediate and short-lived coping mechanism to keep the body alive and survive trauma. So if this trauma is being experienced or re-experienced over longer periods of time and the fight or flight response is sustained, it's going to cause some serious damage to the brain and the body. The body is simply not designed to stay in this state for long periods of time. This is why if you encounter people who have experienced especially childhood trauma, so a lot of people with DID and OSDD and some people with PTSD and CPTSD too, people tend to have a lot of immune systems or physical issues or chronic pain. This is the reason why they can become comorbid. Okay, so stepping away from all the science, what does this mean for the non-biologists among us? When the fight or flight response fails to protect us, it increases our chance of becoming traumatized. And then we cannot self-regulate. 
one of the body's most basic responses for survival has failed, leaving us with no option but to shut down or play dead. The more that our fight or flight response fails to keep us safe, for example, after repeated or reoccurring traumas, the less effective it is. The fight or flight mechanism becomes truncated in the brain rather than being strengthened and reaffirmed after successful use and deployment. The brain begins to learn that fight or flight, one of the body's most basic ways to keep you alive, is failing and doesn't work. This is why children and adults experiencing reoccurring trauma, especially you can see this in situations like domestic abuse, tend to stay with their abusers and it can become very difficult for them to leave. The brain has learned that fight or flight is not effective and therefore will immediately revert to its most basic and final survival mechanism to play dead and surrender. This means we dissociate. So why do children experiencing abuse or trauma in childhood internalize that trauma? Humans are social creatures. We are designed to live alongside and be raised by each other and support and rely on each other for survival. We depend on each other to be successful as mammals that generally live in groups and this is why we are dependent on each other. This is our natural evolutionary state. Because of this, young children have no neurological adaptions to be able to see their primary caregivers as an enemy or a threat. Seeing your caregiver, or in some cases your parent, as a threat to your survival goes against every evolutionary instinct that is instilled in a child's brain. As children, our natural survival instincts mean that we rely on our caregivers to keep us safe in order to survive. There is no neurological adaption in the brain to see anything otherwise. This is how we've learnt to survive. This is how our species has come so far. We rely on being herd creatures. We rely on each other. We rely on being raised in some form of hierarchy where the eldest keep the youngest safe or the strongest keep the youngest safe and that's how we've learned to survive. Therefore, the child has to internalize their trauma. As very young children, they're unable to see these caregivers as bad because it goes against everything their brain says, I need to survive and this is how we have to do it. So if they can't see the person who's hurting them as bad, they have to turn that inwards. Something's wrong with me. They're right, I'm wrong. I'm the bad person, I'm broken. I don't deserve to be loved. This is how we've evolved to stay safe when even our basic mechanisms are failing. If you've experienced trauma, especially childhood trauma, and you always revert to, they were right, this is my fault, something's wrong with me. That was your brain trying to survive then. Things are different now, and it was never your fault. It makes sense that your brain would be telling you that, but it was never your fault. You've always been deserving of love. You always will be deserving of love. You have a right to be here, and you did not deserve what happened to you. I hope that this little debunking disorders or debunking DID video has been helpful for you. Why do we call it debunking DID? It's short for debunking the stigmas and negative connotations that surround dissociative identity disorder. If you'd like to learn more about PTSD and DID, then please have a look at our channel. All our debunking DID videos, as mentioned at the start of this video, have all the resources that you will possibly need down below in the description. So if you'd like to learn more about DID, which used to be known as multiple personality disorder, or are looking for some advice on mental health or maybe just some uplifting and reaffirming validating videos then I hope that we'll have what you're looking for. Please stay on the channel if you enjoyed this, support what we do by clicking that like button and dinging the little bell and subscribe if you'd like to see more of us. And just before I go we have a very exciting announcement so over to past Nin. If you haven't heard already, you should check out tickets below to the Entitled to Life conference, which is happening in San Francisco this 
November. It's happening on the 6th and 7th. It's a two-day conference specifically about DID and OSDD. We are going to be guest speakers there along with Multiplicity and Me, Jeremy and Alternate Perspective, now known as Team Pinata, the Labyrinth System, Fragmented Psych, and the Entropy System. It's going to be an amazing gala. You have the chance to meet us in person if you'd like to. It's going to be a super inclusive and incredibly safe experience. It's safe rooms and everything you could possibly need and it's being very very well put together and we can't wait to see you there. Don't forget to check out tickets below or you can watch the video we made about it up here. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye! Thank you for watching everybody. We hope that you learned something. If you would like to support what we do, please have a look at our Patreon where we thank you for your support by giving off little gifts and that helps us continue to do what we do. It helps us keep a roof over our heads. So thank you very much for allowing us to do what we love as our job. We appreciate all of you and we look forward to the next video. Let us know if you have any questions or anything you want us to answer and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Lots of love everybody. Bye.